Hey guys, welcome to Koi Hime in 8 minutes or less, where we're going to break down everything you need to jump straight into some matches even if you don't own the game. Note that this video assumes you have some basic knowledge of fighting games already, so if you are unfamiliar with any terms or notation used in this video, check the description or ask questions in the comment section. Keep in mind this will only be covering the main ideas, so be sure to refine your knowledge once you have the gist of the game. Let's get started by going over a few key concepts. Attacks are plus on hit, but minus on block. In Koihime, attacks behave different depending on if they hit or are blocked. If you hit your opponent, you're plus, so keep attacking. But if they block, your turn is over. From the defender's perspective, if you block your opponent's block string, you should try and attack back, but if your opponent hits you, you shouldn't press buttons. In other words, blocking is really, really good. As I mentioned, you're plus after blocking moves, so blocking is usually a great option. Not only that, but mix-ups are very weak in this game, so there's very little to be scared of while blocking. A lot of the frame data for normal attacks in Koihime are the same for all characters. While there are small exceptions here and there, just remember that this info generally applies with all characters. Don't think that makes things boring, though. The small differences and subtleties that do exist still create tons of depth. Don't jump. If you think jumping in Street Fighter is bad, this is 10 times worse. Anti-airs are universally strong and lead to huge damage. If your opponent is letting you get away with it, be my guest, but know that at its core, Koihime is all about ground game. Alright, let's go over the control scheme. Koihime has four buttons. A, B, and C are your light, medium, and heavy attacks, and D is for unique attacks like throw and assist. Let's start with a closer look at your normals. A normals are your close range normals. They can all be self-chained and are special cancelable. Use them for pressure, tick throws, or on defense. Your 5B and 2B are your long range normals, used for poking and combos. These are your main normals for neutral game. Between 5B and 2B, only one will usually be special cancelable. The other one will instead be a bit longer and faster. We're using Kanu as the example here, and as you can see her 5B is a bit better, but only her 2B is special cancelable. The special cancelable B normal will combo into most special moves. And this is your main combo, your bread and butter, B normal into special move. That's really it. Even at high level play, this is what the game boils down to. A big part of why this game is so easy to get into is because you don't need to practice hard BNBs. If they block your B move, delaying the special move is a good frame trap, but be careful. Some special moves are punishable if blocked, depending on range. Close B is very similar to Guilty Gear's Close Slash. It comes out automatically when you press 5B while standing close to the opponent. It's almost as fast as an A normal and cancelable into special moves, making it great for close range punishes. Before we move on, let's talk about fatal counters. Certain command normals will fatal counter opponents on counter hit, leading to massive combos. Fatal counters are flashy and they lead to massive damage, but I haven't mentioned them until this point for a reason. And as far as pickup and play goes, you don't need to know these combos to win at all and with many fatal counter moves, you do need some advanced knowledge to know how to land them. That being said, if you're willing to put in a few extra hours in training mode, they are definitely worth learning. 3B is your universal anti-air. It has upper body invincibility and fatal counters. The 3B fatal counter combo should be the first thing you practice, if you have the time, to punish people for jumping at you. 6B is your universal overhead, which also fatal counters. In some cases, this is your only overhead. They're reactable, extremely punishable on block, and only even on hit. Many 6Bs are either throw invincible or low profile, making them very useful for baiting throws or lows. But because they're slow and punishable, 6Bs are not very good risk reward unless you are fishing for that counter hit. But mixing them in can still be really good to keep your opponent on his toes. Your C normals are extremely character specific. Many of them feel counter or are long range moves. These normals can generally be ignored while you're initially learning the game since they're usually used only in specific situations and often very punishable on block. Throws are one of the only real ways of mixing your opponents up due to lack of fast overheads. They don't do much, but they do knock down, which is important since most mirrorless combos don't knock down. A combination of throw and close range normals are the core foundation of a good close range offense in Koihime. You can also tech throws by pressing D. Let's talk about what you can do with meter. Each player has a super gauge which carries over between rounds. Assists require 25% and can be performed with quarter circle forward D. They can be a good way to get in against opponents with longer range than yours or force your turn. 
Each assist has its unique strengths and usages though, so try them out and see which fits you best. EX moves cost 25% and can be performed with A plus B, but I highly recommend you bind it to a button. Japanese arcades even include this button by default. There are no meterless invincible moves in Koihime, but the EX version of every special move has invincibility and startup, so every EX move can be considered a DP. Yes, even fireballs. EX moves have a lot of recovery, so they're always punishable at close range, though some EX moves are safe depending on distance. EX moves are one of the few defensive options in the game. Special cancelled strings, such as B Normal Fireball, always have a gap in between, meaning you can always escape pressure by using a well-timed EX move. EX moves generally have bonus effects such as knocking down, doing extra damage, or going through fireballs, so they can be very versatile. Supers cost 75% and are universally quarter circle forward, half circle back in D. They're a very strong option since they're actually plus 4 on block and do great damage. Definitely try using them when you're in a pinch. Alright, now that you know your basic options, let's talk about neutral game. The basic flow of neutral game revolves around the usage of your B normals. Since mix-ups are practically non-existent outside of throw range, poking and counter-poking are key elements to both keep your opponent out and create opportunities for you to go in. Your main three options are a kind of rock-paper-scissors triangle. Preemptive pokes, with punishing, and moving forward. Preemptive pokes are pokes used to stop opponents from closing in on you or moving forward. These are done ahead of time because you're expecting the opponent to run forward. Lows are often used as preemptive pokes as they're much harder to block while dashing in. If an opponent is placing pokes preemptively to stop you, you can whiff punish them. Unlike other games where you have to be psychic to whiff punish well, pokes in Koihime have so much recovery time that you can do them on reaction without having to predict. Simply way outside of your opponent's poke range then perform your own B attack when you see your opponent whiff. And if an opponent is playing reactively and waiting to whiff punish your pokes, you should take advantage of this and move forward. Even if you don't attempt to force a close range fight, moving forward will help you push your opponent to the corner, which is the worst place to be in Koihime. And if you block their attack, you're at advantage, so just dashing and blocking can be a very powerful game plan. These three basic options of preemptive pokes, with punishing, and moving forward are the three quintessential options that make up Koihime neutral game. If you have a solid grasp of this, you'll excel in Koihime very quickly. And if you're struggling in-game, it'll definitely help you identify your problems. And that's pretty much everything you need to know to jump into the game. Check out your character's move list, then play some matches with your friends or fight the computer to get a feel for things. The key thing about Koihime is that gameplay is dominated by the system. Getting good at Koihime has less to do with understanding your own character, and more about being comfortable with the system and your options. Though simple, the system mechanics can feel very foreign if you're used to more complex offensive fighters, so focus on getting comfortable. Hope you found this video useful, and thanks for watching.